Wicked comes to mind. Absolutely wicked. Evil is too harsh, and any other term is completely underrated. No. Lucy Bagstock is wicked, and she came to claim our crew in the name of the aristocrats. And what a story I have to tell you, Audio Diary. This is Paige Hopkinson reporting from... Well, I'm not too sure, if I'm being honest. Hattie and I are somewhere in the inner city of Pegasus. Long story short, the crew had to split up. God, I hope Ernest and Rex are okay. Edgar got split up with Clint and Alex. Well, the captain ran off on their own. We're not sure where they are, but wherever they may be, I hope they're okay too. This trip has made me realize that numbers don't mean a damn thing. We had more people, but, but by the old gods, Lucy is a woman made of something I've never seen before. She's more than a strong cup of coffee on a cold winter's morning. Let me explain exactly what happened, Audio Diary. Last night I reported to you that we'd been captured in order to bring the bag stocks to us. It was supposed to save us a trip, but, well... Clint gathered us around to explain his strategy. He didn't seem jittery or anything, but I felt as though something was off. You know, looking back, the captain did look a little... Well, they didn't look like anything. But they did just sort of stand there while we discussed what was to come. We were to allow the Bagstocks to take us to wherever they were going to take us. And then from there, we were to cause mayhem. We also had a backup plan in case they wanted to execute some of us on the spot. We had a few other plans, but, well, I don't think anyone was really prepared for Lucy. She's a different kind of gal. And I think Clint and Alex expected her. More secrets. Funny right? Who would have known? Alex and Clint keeping secrets. Paige! I know, I know. Sorry. Anyways, Lucy Bagstock showed up. She's a tall bottle of scotch and leather boots. When her heels click along the ground, you feel this sense of power. It just rolls off her. She showed up, hands on her waist, smirk on her face. She was confident. Captain Alex Strandwood, and Clint, oh, bugger, I forgot your name. She giggled. Both of you are still attractive as ever, though. In that moment, I think we all knew our plans wouldn't work. It wasn't anything she did or said. It was just the air around her. Everything just... What your diary? I don't really know how to describe it. But when you're around Lucy Bagstock, you know you've been royally... Hey! Sorry, but it's true. In that moment, we all know we'd screwed the pooch. God, it was really sloppy planning on our part now that I think about it. I mean, did we really need to bring Ernest? We still would have needed a Cadwell boy, but... Perhaps we could have left him on the ship this time. I don't... <sighs> I don't know. Anyways, as soon as Lucy set eyes on Edgar, she knew exactly who he was. Edgar Cadwell? She chirped. Thought you were dead. He looked unamused. Glad to see my ex doing alive and well. If you're lucky, we might even still have a wedding in the spring. She giggled. By this point, mind you, all of us had our jaws dropped on the floor. No one really knew what to think. And you know what, Hattie? We should really poach that boy when we get back because there's clearly some serious drama going on there. I agree. From my speculation, I'd say they were in an arranged marriage. But I could be wrong, though I know I'm not. Edgar looked so uncomfortable. I couldn't sense any real romance in the air. Just a crazy lady on a power trip and a boy that's handsome and all, but... Anyways, after that awkward exchange, Edgar rolled his eyes and told Lucy she could go... do... something. I don't really want to repeat, mainly because I think Hattie doesn't want to hear it again either. Thank you. Lucy called two of those aliens over and started talking to them in her language. I guess she asked them to let us out and they looked a little nervous at first. But I mean, who was going to argue with this woman? So they let us out. No one moved. We waited. Lucy walked into our little prison and looked at all of us. 
as we sat against the bars. It was like a wolf coming into the chicken's roost. Who wants to go first? She asked. When no one stood, she went to grab Hattie's arm. She's got a real friggin' grip. And Lonnie snatched Lucy's hands and bent her fingers backwards till we heard multiple snaps. She was so stupid to do that. I thought it was awesome, seriously. She said in a broody, broody voice, keep your hands off her. What freaked me out was when Lucy didn't even flinch. She just retracted her hand and smirked. How did you think she knew that was Lonnie Cadwell? I'm, ugh, I'm not sure, Paige. I really hope not. I don't want her to be in danger. I can't stand the thought that she's out there with a murderer running about. Wow, Hattie, I've, I've never seen you this upset before. I know this is troubling, but Lonnie is really tough. I think she's going to be fine. Don't worry. Let's just focus on finding the crew as fast as we can. Yeah. Well, after that, Lucy turned to Clint as though she were about to do something to him, but before she could even finish, Edgar, the idiot, got up behind her and pointed a gun to her back. Okay, I'll have to give credit where credit was due. It was actually also pretty cool. Probably the coolest thing Edgar has ever done. He told her to get out, but she didn't move. She bit her lower lip slowly, as though she were taking in the moment. Enjoying it. It was fucking weird! Paige! I'm sorry. I never curse. But for all the gods' love, I don't know what in the never we watched. Audio your diary, after she did that, Edgar and Lucy engaged in this weird tango of bullets and knives. It was dangerous and we bolted as soon as it started. Even Rix was freaked out. The two of them just dancing and trying to kill one another at the same time. It was so weird and killed several of those aliens and sent the other ones running. The bar was evacuated before we could even get out. And there were so many people once we reached the main street we all just got separated. <sighs> but we're going to do it. Wait, Hattie, look over there. Edgar? No, wait! We also have Lonnie. She was right around the corner. Oh, audio diary, it was so cute. She even hugged Ernest when she's si Shut up. And I'm going to be quiet now. Is this the way back to the bar? We need to search there. I doubt that crazed dog is still in there, so it's important we scope out what we can. But what about Edgar? Well, that's another reason to go. Oh, brother will be okay. <sighs> Let's see. Other than Edgar, it's just Clint and the captain, right? I saw Clint earlier. He's off looking for the captain, and he said he'd rendezvous with us at the ship. Okay, so that just leaves us with Edgar. We're approaching the bar now, and... Oh, no. Edgar! Brother! Get Ernest out of here now! Edgar! No! Bosch and Brave was written by Ashley Glenn and brought to you by Blackmore Productions. The voice of Hattie Wells was Becca Davila. The voice of Lonnie Cadwell was Katrina DeBold. The voice of Ernest Cadwell was Dylan Wickersham. And the voice of Paige Hopkinson was me, Clover Grayson. Like what we do here? Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram, or at our website, blackmoreproductions.com. Want to learn how to voice in anime, video games, or audiobooks? We absolutely love the Voice Actors Studio in Las Vegas. Melissa Motes and her team of coaches are leading industry professionals here to teach you everything about the craft of voice acting, home studios, and anything you may want to know about the business. For more information, visit thevoiceactorstudio.com. We highly recommend it. Blackmore Productions. Swim against the curve.